Hello and welcome to this video on European drainage. My name is Dr. Mark Ivanitsky, and in this video, I'm going to be covering this amazing European modality to detoxify your body, lowering your toxic burden, and restoring vitality. Uh, European drainage is something I'm very passionate about. It's something that I have a lot of experience with, and so I'm excited to give you more of a primer on what this is, how to utilize it in your life and your practice if you're a practitioner and how to become just more familiar with what European drainage is. So my, my name is Dr. Mark Ivanitsky. I'm a naturopathic doctor and acupuncturist. I've been working with drainage remedies, European drainage remedies for the past 20 years, 10 years on the business side where I was importing remedies from Europe and distributing them to doctors in the US, and 10 years on the clinical side where I was utilizing the remedies with patients and seeing how beneficial and how powerful these remedies truly are. So in this video, we're going to get into the nitty gritty and really get into what these, these remedies are. Just first, this disclaimer that all the information I'm giving you here is just for informational educational purposes only. Please consult with your primary care provider before starting any new supplement regimen. So what is European drainage? In a nutshell, European drainage uh, medicine is a form of naturopathic medicine that comes from Europe. It's a foundational piece of European biological medicine, and it operates on the premise that toxicity is the main driver of disease and dysfunction in the body. So by helping to eliminate toxicity, lowering the body's toxic burden, we help, help restore normal, healthy functioning of the body, help heal and reverse chronic disease, and help prevent chronic disease from, from occurring in the future. So these remedies are designed to stimulate detoxification naturally and gently by uh, supporting the organs of detoxification. So primary liver, kidneys, lymphatic system, and gut, the main uh, four organs that are all tied to, to the process of detoxification in the body. So what we'll cover in this, in this video is some, just some intro and some foundational concepts. What exactly is European drainage and who is it for? Who's going to most benefit from it? Getting started, we'll cover some of the major brands and how to take drainage drainage remedies what to expect when you're on a drainage protocol, and some next steps if you're interested in learning more. So some foundational concepts, uh, we're going to go over toxicity, our toxic world, how to toxicity is one of the main drivers of chronic disease. We're going to cover the concepts around the extracellular matrix, homotoxicology, and overall uh, toxic burden in the body. So toxicity is a major problem in our, in our world. 250 billion tons of chemical substances are uh, spewing into the environment every year. 144,000 man-made chemicals are in existence. Many of them have never been tested, never been um, for, for appropriate safety quality uh, concerns. 2,000 new chemicals are created every year, and the UN Environmental Program warns that most of these have never been screened for human health safety. So, um, you know, one or two is not a bad thing, but when we have 250 billion and 144,000 unique chemicals, there, it's a combined um, problem that, that causes a lot of issues. So we're talking about your, the air, water, soil, uh, everywhere we're, we're getting exposed to, to these chemicals. And um, they've all been tied to, and linked to uh, chronic disease and degeneration in the body. So just some more statistics from the EPA's 2020 Toxic Release Inventory. Just a, a lot of toxicity that's coming into our environment from manufactured chemicals, plastic, hazardous waste, coal, oil, and gas, agricultural pesticides, uh, metals and, and uh, heavy metals and materials, mining, waste, waste products from mining, and then all that contamination in our water as well. So the types of toxins, when we say, you know, toxicity, what are we, what are we talking about? There are, there are endogenous toxins, which are actually uh, toxins your body produces as a byproduct of, of metabolism, normal metabolism. And there are exogenous toxins, basically everything we've just kind of mentioned are toxins that are coming from the environment. And typically, in terms of definition, those types of toxins are actually called toxicants. So there are anything that's going to be man-made from the environment is going to be referred to as a technically called a toxicant, whereas a toxin is, is natural coming from organic substances. I tend to refer to both as toxins. Most people don't really haven't heard of use this term toxicants. And so uh, it's just kind of, um, you know, splitting hairs there. But basically, these are substances that are, that are uh, toxic or dangerous to our bodies. So another term you might hear is xenobiotics, which is also uh, a form of, uh, also refers to toxicants. 
heavy metals, industrial pollutants, uh, chemicals from in our cosmetics and skincare, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, household cleaners, EMFs and uh, electromagnetic frequencies from, from man-made uh, electronics and 5G also present uh, as a form of toxicity in the body. And of course, vaccines and then any kind of infections, mold, and even emotional toxicity. Uh, toxins as a byproduct of, of metabolism, of neurotransmitters and, and sympathetic dominance, uh, uh, hormones related to sympathetic dominance, creating an, an, an increased toxicity in the body. So when we say toxins, this is really all we're, we're talking about, this major group. And how do they affect our body? So there's many, many ways, proven ways in which we know that toxins disturb our, our biology and our functioning of our body. They um, can they decrease our extra, the pH of our extracellular mixtures, making it more acidic. And in acidic environments, uh, is where pathogens breed, uh, neoplastic process, cellular breakdown. So uh, we're talking about cancers, all, any form of uh, degeneration um, happens within an acidic environment. All uh, or many of these act as endocrine disruptors or hormone disruptors. So any kind of um, disruption in our sex hormones, our thyroid hormone, adrenal hormones, these are all being affected by, by these chemicals. Heavy metals in particular can block the electron transport chain, which is the main way which we, which we generate energy in our body, which we, which we produce ATP from. So by blocking any one of the components of the, extra, of the electron transport chain, we're actually affecting the production of energy in our body as well. And then, of course, damaging DNA, which leads to uh, neoplastic process or the formation of, of uh, neoplasti- uh, neoplasms or cancers, damage to neurons and neuronal signaling, weakening of our immune system cells, the burning through of glutathione, which is a main antioxidant in the body. So we have a lowered, lowered capacity to handle even more toxicity. And finally, also, we're, we're getting a disruption in our gut microflora. And so that leads to breakdown in normal functioning of the gut breakdown of um, breakdown of cellular communication in the gut. So we get things like leaky gut and all the things that down downstream from that, which is increased inflammation, increased susceptibility to allergies and uh, susceptibility, susceptibility to autoimmune disease. So really this toxicity is such a foundational foundational piece to how we are experiencing disease in our modern world and understanding it and helping to reverse it is key has been key in my, in my practice and, and pra- practitioners I've worked with uh, been foundational to reversing disease once we reverse the effects of toxicity in the body. So what makes us susceptible to toxins? Everyone has a different, uh, different susceptibility, our genetic makeup, our genes related to our ability to, to process toxins, our diet, our nutritional status, how, how healthy is our diet, how, how, um, fortify with nutrients and vitamins and minerals is it to help to the detoxification process. Our lifestyle, our work and individual exposures, our history of pharmaceutical use is going to also uh, affect the level of toxicity. And even, and as we mentioned, our emotional health, how we process emotions, if we're a more sympathetic or parasympathetic dominant state, uh, this is all going to affect how susceptible we are to toxins and how susceptible we are how good we are at detoxifying and removing that toxic exposure uh, in the body. So some of the symptoms you may, you may experience with, with um, intoxication, all the vague kind of functional medicine complaints that functional medicine doctors deal with, fatigue, weight gain, anxiety, depression, insomnia, cognitive impairments, irritability, frequent urination, ir- irregular menstruation, r- any kind of skin manifestation, rashes, hormonal deficiencies, GI complaints, IBS, gas, bloating, diarrhea, all these are functional complaints. They don't have a specific disease um, that they're being attached to, but these are complaints that we see patients come in all the time and saying, you know, I ha- I'm, I'm technically fine when I go to my, to my primary care doctor. They say I'm fine, but I'm dealing with all these, all these complaints or, or some of these complaints and what is going on with me? Help, please help me uh, deal with this. So we see this all the time uh, in functional practices. And then, of course, there's also diagnosed uh, chronic diseases. All, all the chronic diseases uh, fall into this category. Uh, autoimmune diseases, neurological diseases, all endocrine disorders, obesity, cardiovascular disease, chronic infections, cancers, all are symptoms of an over-intoxication in the body or body's ability to no longer handle, especially the immune system. A lot of these cases becomes overburdened, overwhelmed. 
and can no longer function properly and these 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 symptoms of disease manifest so I want to talk a little bit about homotoxicology homotoxicology is a branch of european european biological medicine that actually studies how the process in which toxins that lead to specific disease in different organs and organ systems in the body. And so the study, study of homotoxicology shows us how uh, the toxins are affecting and then also how we can reverse uh, that degeneration, that cellular degeneration. You know, when we talk about toxicity, where, where is it being stored? Predominantly we, predominantly, we think of fat, but also the extracellular matrix. The extracellular matrix is the space that exists in around in and around all cells of the body it's kind of this this comp huge compartment of the body that um, can almost be thought of as this organ unto itself uh, the, the the red blood cells in our capillaries communicate with the space the cells the organ cells themselves communicate with the space this is how there's a transfer of nutrients transfer of toxicity transfer of metabolic waste happens in the extracellular matrix so extracellular matrix is a very important concept to understand in homotoxicology because this is where a lot of toxins are being stored. And this is a lot of where, where the to toxins are actually contributing to, to, to G degeneration and uh, eventual disease is in the, in the matrix. So we've heard of how fat storage is the long, more of the long-term storage of a lot of um, different uh, heavy metals, glyphosate, different chemicals from, from, uh, from plastics and from uh, petroleum byproducts. These are all stored in, um, the, the deep layers of fat, but then also, again, the extracellular matrix. So the extracellular matrix was a concept discovered by uh, Alfred Pischinger. He wrote a very famous book on the topic, the ECM and ground regulation basis, basis for holistic biological medicine. Basically, how understanding the matrix, understanding how toxicity is stored there, how understanding how toxicity drives disease in the matrix really gives us a foundational understanding of how we can affect healing wellness and self uh, re regeneration, cellular so regeneration when, once we start affecting uh, the matrix. So 20% of the total body mass is actually, con is actually contained in that actually matrix. So it is a very, uh, very important space in the body, very important uh, concept to understand when we're dealing with um, toxicity and then also with, with drainage and how drainage remedies can affect the space and affect healing in the space. So the extracellular matrix, uh, you may have heard people sometimes refer to it by different terms. Sometimes biological terrain is used, intestinal, uh, interstitial matrix, intestinal, internal milieu, the ground matrix, ground regulatory system, the garden, the environment, the mesenchyme, connective tissue. Connective tissue represents a higher level order of the extracellular matrix, uh, but it's a similar, a similar uh, space in, in that it is in between cells and um, connects the whole entire body in, in one holistic uh, fashion. So this is this in this environment, kind of like soil feeds and nourishes uh, the cells of our body. So that it's comprised of uh, proteoglycans, fibrous proteins, collagen proteins. Uh, immune cells live in this space. Macrophages, neutrophils, mast cells, NK cells. It's also um, where the space where the lymphatic system is able to pull toxins out from. It's a place where the autonomic nervous system can reach into and affect uh, individual cells. And the, the liquid, the fluid that's, that's involved in the space is actually called easy water or exclusion zone water. It's the fourth phase of water. It's a, four, a gel-like form of water, a liquid crystalline structure that has charge, that can, that can, um, that can conduct charge, that can uh, um, transmit electrons uh, uh, via this space. So... Uh, some some researchers are kind of looking at this as a way that uh, the acupuncture meridian systems can can communicate by touching one uh, part of the body with a needle. You're able to affect uh, other parts of the body through this communication of the extracellular matrix. So it's a really foundational, interesting concept. If you want to learn more, the fourth phase of water uh, is an interesting book on on the uh, easy water concept. This is a really foundational, really great. Uh, diagram of the extracellular matrix. So the space here we can see is the actual space of the matrix. Here we have the closed loop system of the heart and the capillaries in our organs. And so the heart pumps the blood, the capillaries release nutrients from the red blood cells. Red blood cells actually don't ever leave the capillaries, but the nutrients and oxygen leave that space. They go into the extracellular matrix where they're communicating with 
uh, the cells of the space, the fibers of the space, the connective tissue, the water of the space, and eventually go into the organ cells of our body. The organ cells here as well release toxins, release uh, metabolic waste products uh, from storage. They put them into the electrolyte matrix, and then the lymphatic system is able to collect all that fluid, all that garbage into lymphatic circulation, where then it goes into regular circulation by the uh, lymphatic ducts, and then is able to get processed by the liver and the kidneys. So this is one giant loop, closed loop here, and this is how the body is able to communicate or, or expel waste products from the cells into the lymphatic system. Again, the nervous system is also in contact with this space. So the parasympathetic and sympathetic nerve endpoints are able to touch the, the extracellular matrix. So a little bit more about homotoxicology was designed by Dr. Hans Heinrich Reckweg, one of the founding fathers of German biological medicine. And he developed this table of a uh, six phase table of homotoxicology showing how toxins in the space can affect cellular degeneration and lead to eventually complete degeneration, which is cancer and neoplastic process. But then all along the way, depending on which compartment, which organ system, uh, organ network in the body, those toxins are located, can then affect uh, all the manifestations of disease that we see. So there are uh, six main phases, excretory phase, the inflammatory phase, depository phase, impregnation, degeneration, and dedifferentiation. So basically, you can think of the flow of, of toxicity or the flow of increasing body burden moves in this direction. First, the body is trying to excrete as much as it can, but if there's an overwhelming amount of toxicity, overwhelming amount of toxic burden, eventually there's an inflammatory phase and then the body starts deposition phase, the body starts trying to hide the toxicity, the sort of starts putting it in storage and extra matrix. Eventually, that becomes overburdensome as well, and then the toxins enter the cell, they start entering and affecting the functioning of cells uh, uh, intracellularly, and then eventually even affecting the functioning of the nucleus of the cell, and we have DNA breakdown, DNA degeneration, and eventually the neoplastic process. And so depending on where in the body this is happening, you're going to see all different sorts of manifestation of disease. <clears throat> the barrel analogy is another way of kind of looking at this whole concept of how we all have a predisposition to handle a toxic load, but eventually once uh, the, you can think of the water in the bucket as the toxicity, after a while with, with, a, with additional uh, exposures, we become overburdened, our, our, the toxic burden becomes so high that we can no longer, we can no longer uh, properly deal with the flow of toxicity and we have an overspill of water. And that overspill is going to manifest as symptoms of disease, symptoms of dysfunction in the body. So all the things we talked about can, uh, in terms of toxicity is going to con contribute to that. And our ability to handle it, our kind of our load depends on many factors that we talked about, genetic factors, nutritional status, how hardy and healthy we are overall, our overall vitality, how we're able to handle that toxic load. But eventually... Uh, if there are symptoms manifesting, it means that the bucket's overflowing. There are too many toxins uh, that need to be drained and eliminated and pulled out of the, out of the bucket, out of um, uh, the, the overflow that's happening. So again, we all have different abilities. We all have different sized barrels or different sized buckets. Some of us are way more sensitive and even a small exposure is going to create symptoms of disease. They're going to have manifestations, autoimmune disease, neoplastic process. Some people are very hardy. They can have a lot of exposures and they have a big barrel and nothing really affects them. But all of us are being exposed constantly to this toxicity and all of us would benefit from a, from a, from a um, draining, from a releasing of the toxicity. And we'll talk a little bit about how drainage remedies and how European drainage remedies in particular really play into this and how they help support the lowering of the toxic burden in our barrels. So a little bit deeper into European biological medicine or homotoxicology, uh, there are three pillars in terms of how we treat patients. So detoxification and drainage is always the base. It's always the initial pillar. Once we start detoxifying the body, though, we always, we can look into other ways of supporting the body. So immune modulation, affecting the, the gut immune system, working with the microbiome, working with um, different um, remedies in this category, something called pleomorphic remedies, which are remedies which are, help, supposed to des are designed to help support immune modulation or moving the immune system into a more healthy state. Uh, once we've detoxified the body. And then also regeneration or strengthening the overall vitality of the body of the organs of the body, cellular activation, organ strengthening is another pillar 
Um, but drainage is foundational. Drainage is the key. If you did nothing else, if you did nothing else in terms of your practice or in terms of your health, in terms of dealing with, with chronic disease, from a European biological medicine standpoint, and what I've seen in practice is really using, using drainage, utilizing drainage to lower toxicity is going to be key to achieving success um, and ach achieving reversing reversal of chronic disease and prevention of chronic disease. So just defining some terms when we talk about drainage, we're talking about European drainage remedies, uh, also known as um, when we're referring to UNDA remedies, biotherapeutic drainage, we'll talk about that. It's a, a when, we say, when we say refer to it, sometimes we're, we're calling it detox. So there's there's a little bit of confusion sometimes with the terms of detox and drainage. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, but basically they're, 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 they're very similar, but I like to kind of separate them because uh, there is some unique, um, unique characteristics of both a drainage and then a, uh, when we refer to something as a detox. Um, sometimes referred to as a pre-tox or we do drainage before we do detoxifications. Uh, and, uh, detoxification is something most people are familiar with. We talked about European biological medicine a little bit. Swiss biological medicine is another term used when referring to uh, the foundational concept of, of drainage, uh, European biological medicine and drainage used by Dr. Rao uh, in Switzerland. Biologics, biologics not to be confused with biological medicine, biologics are more are pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceuticals that, that refer to the um, use of um, remedies that are actually blocking or um, treating specific symptoms of autoimmune disease. So that's when we, tell you, when we refer to biologics. Bioregulatory medicine is a term used in the United States when referring to biological medicine. Uh, homotoxicology, again, is the study of how toxins are affecting the, this whole system, and it is a subset of the study of bioregulatory or biological medicine. Homeopathy is a type of energy medicine. We'll talk a little bit about um, how, uh, how that plays into drainage remedies. Spagyrics, another type of production process in the creation of remedies. Pleomorphism is a type of uh, remedy in the family of European biological medicine. They're not specifically uh, drainage remedies. They're affecting, again, the more of the immune system. We talked a little bit about the immune modulation. We're talking about pleomorphic remedies. And then, again, biological terrain, milieu, ECM, ground substance, all referring to the extracellular matrix, which we uh, talked a little bit about. So what is the difference between a drainage and a detox? So drainage specifically refers to these remedies, these, these, um, these herbal uh, remedies that, we, that are produced in uh, Europe by these European biological medicine companies. And the remedies are, are, are physical. They have, they're made from herbal uh, components, but they're also energetic. Energetic meaning they're, they're either homeopathic or spagyric, and they have um, certain higher frequencies or the way that the energies are produced, they have um, uh, an energetic component to them that, uh, in addition to the physical, is able to affect, um, uh, affect the, the cells of the organs that they're targeting in a very unique way. Uh, there are also uh, low dose remedies or lower dose remedies that are that are more similar to the concentrations found within cells, and so they're able to uh, more easily pass through membranes and able to affect the functioning of cells uh, more effectively. Um, so drainage remedies they're designed they're it's sometimes referred to as a pretox. Uh, the first time I heard that was uh, Dr. Christopher Shade was referring to European drainage remedies as a pretox. We do it before we're doing any kind of other more intensive detoxifications, like something like a chelation or something like um, when we're doing <clears throat> IV therapies or more uh, aggressive binding or things like that, we can uh, think of doing drainage first to prime the body, to prime the body for more intensive drainage. What I find is that sometimes drainage is enough. It's, sometimes it's even more than enough. It's enough. You don't need to be doing more extensive uh, detoxifications a lot of times when you're doing a drainage because it really affects and strengthens the body in a really uh, strong way. But um, if you are doing these other forms of detoxification, then drainage is always the foundational piece you do first. So again, these are these are remedies that are affecting globally our organ systems. So specifically, the four main organs of primary organs of elimination when we talk about drainage are the the lymphatic system, the liver, the kidneys, and the gut. Uh, <clears throat> these organ systems, <clears throat> excuse me, organ systems are primarily in charge of removing toxic waste from the body. So when we're talking about drainage, we're talking about supporting these, these main organs. Um, and so again, they're herbal and homeopathic, they're energetic and physical. They're a very unique type of remedy that doesn't really exist in the United States. They're primarily produced in Europe. 
which is why it's referred to as European drainage remedies or European biological medicine. So what are we referring to when we say when we say detox? Detox generally is referring to more specific biological pathways um, that we know of um, through cellular biology, uh, specifically phase one, phase two, and phase three detoxification that happens in, in all the cells, but primarily in the cells of the liver. So when we uh, are pushing a specific phase of detox specific pathway, we like to think of it uh, more as a traditional form of a detox. So something like glutathione, different vitamins, minerals, specific things that are pushing a pathway, um, not necessarily affecting the ent entire organ. Uh, even things like uh, fasting or juicing or skin brushing or cupping, chelation, all these things could be considered more of a detox where they're pushing a pathway or pushing a specific organ. Whereas drainage, you can think of as more as a global, global, gentle uh, way of stimulating the main organs of detox. So how are dra drainage remedies taken? Basically, they're liquid drop dose remedies. So they're, um, um, you can see here, I have an a example of, of a remedy here. This um, is from the company Saluna. And um, they're, they come in these bottles. They're basically liquid. Uh, this is a, another bottle from Hevert. Have intestinum. And so they're liquid remedies. They're all going to be liquid. And so you can drop those then, meaning that you can do one tiny little drop or you can do up to 20 drops, 30 drops on the higher end. So the range is between one and 30 drops. Typical dosing is between one and one and three times a day, usually about morning and night, twice a day. And you typically do them for an initial 30-day cycle. So it's a kind of a cycle that, that builds and for you're having decreased inflammation, you're having more bio biochemical effects on the, on the cells of the organ. And the body's energy and resources from an energetic or Chinese medicine standpoint is being focused on the organs with these remedies. Again, they're physical and energetic uh, combination remedies. Some brand examples we're going to talk about, Saluna, Guna, and Unda um, in this video. So drainage is critical for proper detox. I always, uh, again, it's foundational. If you're going to do any other type of detox, especially something like chelation or antimicrobials or any kind of pharmaceuticals you're using, basically anything you're doing in your practice or anything kind of therapies you're doing, uh, for example, with chronic Lyme, if you're doing antibiotics, if you're doing um, any kind of heavy metal detox, drainage is so critically important because it's going to, in, it's going to enhance, it's going to... Um, going to strengthen your, your, your patient's ability to handle more aggressive treatments. The patients are going to be, are, are going to have less uh, detox reactions. They're going to, they're going to be stronger. They're going to have healthier. They're going to respond quicker and faster when you start them on drainage first. Uh, it's it kind of like the analogy. Uh, one of the doctors I work with, Dr. Schultz says is that you have a dirty kitchen with, with, um, with mice everywhere. The mice that represent kind of m microbes in this example, let's say if you're dealing with Lyme disease, and you want to kill off those microbes. So instead of just, um, you know, shooting at the at the mice, why don't we clean up the kitchen first so we know what they are. So we, we clean the dishes, we get everything off the, off the countertop. And then what we're left with is our ability to spot the spot the uh, the microbes more easily, this mice more easily and kill them and get rid of them faster, easier, more efficiently. Um, uh, and then if we were just to, just to do an antimicrobial treatment, same goes for heavy metals and, and more aggressive chelation therapies, uh, or any oxidative therapy, or even for any pharmaceutical, we want to make sure that drainage is on board first. It's so critically important that we lower the body's toxic burden, the body burden of toxicity before we introduce any other treatments into the body, because we're, we're going to have a much better response in the patient. The patient's going to have a much easier time, faster time. A more gentle time at dealing with uh, any other therapy. So the best time to drain uh, in a healthy person would be, you know, generally if you're not having any symptoms and you're, and you're pretty and you're pretty healthy, I generally recommend twice a year as a kind of a spring and, and a fall uh, kind of cleaning or cleansing of the body, kind of lowering the, the toxic, lowering the toxic burden of the body. If you're chronically ill, you may need to go on longer than a 30 day cycle. You may need multiple, multiple rounds. Of, of drainage. Um, and sometimes you can be on them for up to six months or longer. If you're dealing with, if you're dealing with chronic disease, the bucket's very, very full. And it, it's, it's going to take a long time to get that toxicity down. Um, and rather than just doing a one, one off 30, 30 day cycle. 
So when we talk about homeopathy, homeopathy is the process of, of a lot of these remedies are created in a homeopathic fashion, meaning they're diluted and there's a process of succussion. That succussion um, is a shaking that happens with the, with the remedies inside the different herbal preparations. There's a shaking that happens and that shaking uh, is said to imbue a certain type of resonance, a certain type of frequency uh, into, the, into the water of the remedy. And that water... Uh, again, is, is that easy water, that the water that can hold uh, the information when it's being um, succussed in this way is able to then carry and transfer the information into the remedy and then into, um, into our bodies. And when we take it, um, so the, or, the, the, the combination of formulas are, does, are herbal remedies are targeted for those organs, for the liver, for the kidney, lymphatics, and the gut. Uh, and then they're produced in this way to have this extra energetic frequency. They're going to be different than just a plain herbal, herbal, herbal preparation. And I've seen uh, patients respond much, much better to these energetic preparations than if we were just to give a uh, herbal preparation that is um, a lower energetic frequency, maybe a more uh, gross matter uh, uh, preparation than if we did an energetic uh, uh, remedy such as, such as this. So, um, you know, there's a lot of debate in, home, in, the, in, in the scientific community if homeopathy is real, if it, um, it sounds like hocus pocus, it sounds like magic, it sounds like, how can this really be doing anything? But from the, you know, literally thousands of practitioners have been using these remedies successfully for, for over 100 years in a lot of cases, they work. Our, maybe our, our philosophical or our uh, technical understanding of how they work may not be fully there yet or fully baked, but the fact that they do work clinically um, is, is very, very real. And, um, so for in that case, you know, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Don't completely um, eliminate and say this can't work, so it doesn't work. Um, uh, it is, it is, it does work. And so um, just have an open mind when you kind of take these remedies, or if you're a practitioner listening to this, have an open mind with these remedies, uh, and just try them and see and start experimenting in your practice because you're going to have really great results uh, with your patients. Spagyric, so the spagyric production method is, 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 a, is a unique type of uh, production method, it's slightly different than traditional homeopathy, but the idea is they're also imbuing uh, energetics into, into the remedy through a process of distillation and um, maceration. So this is a cycle that happens um, with the spagyric remedy. Uh, in my opinion, it's, it tends to be a little bit stronger, more effective than a traditional combination homeopathic remedy. And we'll talk about some of the companies that are doing that. But um, it's a uh, very fascinating, unique way of, of producing remedies that you can spend hours talking about. Uh, if you're interested, you can to learn more about that. Um, uh, I would suggest looking into um, um, Rudolf Steiner and Paracelsus. Um, these were both kind of foundational uh, philosophers and doctors in the field of spagyrics and spagyric remedies. Again, so when we're talking about uh, detoxification, we're talking about the organs of elimination, organs of detoxification, also known as the monk trees. And these are the organs we're targeting with these remedies. So they're organs, organ-wide, organ-specific. Again, the liver, the kidneys, lymphatics, and the gut in some cases. We also actually can target the extracellular matrix. And then the secondary organs of elimination, skin and lungs. All these combined are ways in which the body is able to remove toxicity, get it out of the body. Uh, and so we want to target these remedies, these organs with our remedies or European uh, drainage remedies uh, when we're doing a detox and a drainage protocol. And so the primary path of detox, we, we talked a lot, a lot about this. I wanted to kind of go over it again to kind of show you how we remove toxins from the body, how we actually lower the toxic body burden. So from the extracellular matrix here, this is the the cellular level of what's happening. Again, the organ cells are represented here, the space of the extra matrix here. We have the release of toxicity into the lymphatic system. And so that, that looks like here, so the lymphatic system collects all the um, waste products from every single cell in the body. It then dumps it into regular circulation where it, it gets handed off to the liver. The liver is doing the primary job. It's, it's the main, if we're talking about even just one organ of detox, it's always gonna be the liver. Liver is a filter that processes all of the toxicity into water soluble and fat soluble toxins. The water soluble get processed and sent to the kidneys for excretion out through the urine, and the fat soluble get passed into the uh, 
into the large intestine, eventually passing into, into the stool. And so the gut itself is also acts as a form of detoxification. The microbiome in the gut can actually affect um, xenobiotics and, and uh, toxicants and detoxify them, which is fascinating and amazing. And then the walls of the large intestine can actually excrete as well. So it's another layer of excretion that's happening in the gut. So the gut is cr critically important for that. And then eventually we get our way into the production of stool. When we talk about sweating and exhale, uh, exhalation through the lungs, also we're talking about toxins being first processed by the, the liver, getting, then getting sent to the skin and getting sent to uh, the, the lungs. So this is the primary pathway when you're talking about detoxification, the primary organs, which we're going to want to target, support, heal, strengthen when we're talking about a drainage protocol uh, and to help the, the flow of detoxification and toxins out of the body. So again, who is going to benefit from uh, a form of drainage or a, 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 a uh, protocol of drainage is anyone who's interested in pre health prevention and health optimization. Ideally, this is the ideal place you're going to be doing drainage because you're lowering the body's toxic burden before there's a manifestation of disease and dysfunction. Anyone with any functional vague complaints is going to benefit from drainage. And of course, anyone with any kind of chronic disease is going to benefit because at this point, the toxicity is so high that we have overt manifestation of disease in the organs of the body. Uh, and so lowering the toxic burden here is just, just as important if in, as we're talking about functional complaints or as in, in a prevention as well. And it, it even, even in acute scenarios, uh, you can use drainage remedies. And I've seen them work well for um, acute conditions, something you know, like cold and flu. Um, there are actually some companies that make targeted remedies for, let's say, the immune system which is going to help drain uh, in the interim, the short term, to help support um, uh, the immune system in that, in that faction. But uh, when we're talking about drainage overall, we're talking about the main organs of detoxification that are being targeted in, in a drainage protocol. Again, it's really safe for all ages. Dosing will depend on the age. Uh, UNDA remedies I tend to use more for children and infants. And you always consult your doctor first before going on any drainage protocol. Generally, the remedies are very, very safe. Um, dosing can be easily adjusted. So let's say you, you do uh, a, a course of drainage. You start off with 15 drops twice a day, and you're, all of a sudden you're having a lot of detox reactions, a lot of detox symptoms. The body starts pushing toxins out. And in certain cases, you may have an exacerbation. Uh, or we, Sometimes we call that a Herxheimer reaction. With drainage remedies, you can very easily then drop dose it down. And so at 15 drops, you can drop it down to 10, to 5, to 1, Whatever is um, comfortable, where your body is able to comfortably detoxify, de comfortably drain, and still maintain um, and still maintain a detoxification process without having symptom over symptoms. So they're very, very easily adjustable that way, uh, which I do love about them. They are an, an alcohol base, so if anyone with alcohol sensitivity may want to watch out, but you can actually put the uh, drop dose of remedies in a little bit of warm water and just wait until the alcohol evaporates out. Um, and so that's a way that to, to kind of go around that if you have an um, alcohol sensitivity. A little bit more about the, the um, Herxheimer reactions. Typically what we see is that um, these actually are a good sign when we see kind of these detox reactions. It means that the body's moving away from that degeneration. We talked about the six phases, the, the more of the serious degeneration phases. Moving into the more of acute phase, you have to pass through the phase of inflammation. The inflammatory phase is uh, kind of the bridge between the degenerative phase and more of that acute phase. So it's an uncomfortable phase. And when you go into that inflammatory phase, we have, we have symptoms of aches and pains. We have sometimes we have fevers that can happen in this, in this phase. Um, we have just an, uh, uh, fatigue, malaise, all these rashes can have a very common in, in this, in this phase. And so when we do see these symptoms, it's, it's actually a good sign We're moving in the right direction. Although I can, again, we don't want to, uh, push too much or push too fast again that's so where we can drop dose down and adjust the dosing but having these this inflammation these symptoms is actually a good sign it means we're moving in the right direction towards healing and uh, regeneration and in traditional homeopathy we see this as a reversal of older symptoms so a lot of times patients will say uh, i'm starting to feel better but all this this uh, weird knee pain that i uh, that i had never since i've had this uh, old knee injury is starting to come up again. All these old symptoms are coming up because the body's starting to push out uh, and push through um, 
the older symptoms that were suppressed, that were suppressed using more traditional medicines, uh, blocking agents, steroids, uh, painkillers, NSAIDs, things like that, that blocked and suppressed symptoms, those are going to start coming out as the body moves towards healing. So again, those are, that's actually another good sign. So it's something not to be worried about if you're going through a drainage. Generally, you want to avoid during pregnancy and while you're nursing. Um, this is really the case for basically anything you're taking because um, you're just, you don't want to be start stirring things up and start moving things around when you're pregnant and dealing with a newborn baby. Um, you don't want anything to cross the placenta and into the baby. So the best time to do is a drainage and detox is before you get pregnant to strengthen your uterus, strengthen your body's ability to, to heal, regenerate, uh, and uh, have balance the hormones and the immune system. If you want to do all that before you're getting pregnant, before you're, you're, you're doing, um, um, before you have a child, once you're breastfeeding and you have a baby, it's difficult to start detoxifying. You know, some, some women have done it and I've had, you know, patients who do it and, and generally, again, generally safe because it is very gentle on the body, but I would avoid against it. I would say stay away from, from doing that while you're pregnant and nursing and just let sleeping dogs lie in terms of sleeping dogs being the the toxic burden of the body. Do you want to stir that up and start detoxifying? Let that, uh, let that lie where it is for now. Before you do any kind of drainage, um, I always say it's important to make sure you have the foundations of detoxification on board first. And so I talk a lot about uh, the foundations, the nine pillars of detoxification. Um, I have a whole protocol guide on this. You can download on my website. I'll include in the, in the, in the description below, but these are the, the main things you want to do in order to, to start uh, supporting the natural detoxification of the body before even going on drainage. Um, you want to avoid and eliminate toxic exposure as best you can. You want to make sure you're hydrated, drinking a lot of water, making sure you're eating a lot of fiber. Fiber is one of the best natural binders we have to, to bind up and eliminate toxins uh, from the stool, from the, from the gallbladder, from the bile. Movement is a great way to get the lymphatic system moving. So you're getting things, you're getting the, pro, the pump going in terms of lymphatic flow from the periphery into circulation and detoxification that way. Diet in terms of eating a healthy diet that's high in phytonutrients, vitamins, and minerals. So we're supporting the metabolic process of, of detoxification. Sleep is how our brains detoxify. And this is a really great way of supporting uh, the flow of toxins out of the brain through the lymphatic system and sleep is a way that we do that. Breath and quieting the mind, these are ways of ways, uh, these are ways of supporting the parasympathetic nervous system, supporting uh, the rest, digest, and detox part of the nervous system. I want to make sure you have these foundations of, of uh, detoxifications on board first before even doing a drainage protocol. Again, you can download my guide to detox fundamentals, a link in the bio or on my website, drmarkivinitsky.com. Okay, so when we're talking about drainage, and this is kind of the meat and potatoes, what, what are we actually saying? We're saying these, these are remedies produced by these companies. So the main German companies are Saluna, Hevert, Nesman, Bacana, Heal, Dr. Breckweg, uh, Phonix, and Pasco. These are the main producers from Germany. The Swiss company is called Ceres, which is a great company. Um, Italian companies that produce remedies are called Guna and Aeronobili. And then the one of the main ones that the United States that we're familiar with is the Unda line of, of remedies from Belgium. There are some U.S. companies that are starting to produce remedies in this category. Uh, some that are really just herbal preparations, not actually energetic drainage remedies, uh, would fall into the category Um would be uh, Cellcore and Quicksilver are two companies that are making remedies um, that are actually even more herbal preparations than actually drainage remedies, even though they're calling them drainage remedies. And then true drainage uh, remedy companies, um, Physica, Desbio, Energetics are companies that look like they're, they're I don't have a lot of uh, uh, experience with these companies or using them. Uh, I've used Desbio some in my practice. Um, but they're producing remedies that are targeting these organs. They're energetic. And so, um, worth looking into if you're, if you're interested in learning more about them. So I'm going to uh, talk about a couple of these brands, um, and the specific remedies for, for drainage that they make. So Saluna, Saluna is one of, is, is I consider it the Rolls Royce of drainage companies. It is, um, 
it is the most powerful. It's pejoric preparations uh, started by Alexander von Bernis in 1921. So they've been over around over 100 years. They are um, they grow their own medicinal herbs in a medicinal garden near San Pellegrino um, in the uh, in the Swiss Alps in the Italian Alps uh, near Avarara, Italy. They make a system uh, a line of 23 different. They call them salonets, which are all organ specific. So when we're talking about drainage, we're talking about saluna number eight, which is called hepatic for the liver, saluna number nine, lymphatic for the, for the lymph, saluna 16, renalin for the kidneys, and saluna number 19, somatic for the gut. So these are the remedies from the saluna line of, of, of drainage remedies you would take in order to start a drainage protocol. Some pictures uh, of saluna, just really gorgeous. These are the gardens here. It's really just a magical, you kind of imagine gnomes and fairies and unicorns <laughs> running around here. Um, the facilities are just really, really amazing. So again, they, they produce through the um, spagyric distillation and maceration process, the production of the remedies um, are very, very intertwined with astrology, with anthroposophic medicine, and they produce very, very powerful, very potent extremely potent remedies uh, that have tremendous, tremendous effects. We've seen, we've used these remedies uh, in, in cancer patients and autoimmune patients that had really fantastic results at um, reversing or reversing chronic disease. So this is really powerful. I think the most powerful company that I've seen uh, working with different doctors in the country, Dr. Schultz uh, in particular, these are uh, fantastic remedies. Guna is a company out of Milan, Italy. They produce a line of drainage remedies as well. Guna is great because they actually do a lot of scientific studies. So there are actually some really great research papers and studies that Guna is able to point to in their remedies. And so for the drainage, um, the drainage remedies, they have Guna Deep Cleanse for the liver, Guna Lympho Detox for the lymph, Guna Kidney Plus for the kidneys, and Guna Bowel Plus for the gut. They actually also make a remedy specific for the matrix, which matrix, the extracellular matrix, which is very cool. It's unique to them. I don't know are there any of the companies that have a targeted remedy for the matrix. So you can include that remedy if you're doing a, a, a round of drainage, or you can just uh, use the traditional four major primary organs of elimination and see how, see how you do, see how you feel, and then you can add that in maybe if you're not having a lot of movement or you want a little extra support with, uh, with drainage. And finally, I'm going to mention Unda. Unda is actually the most well-known in the United States. Probably when people think of drainage, they only think of Unda uh, in the United States. So the main organs are Unda, uh, main remedies uh, for that, that Unda uses. They don't actually do a lymphatic remedy, but uh, Unda number one, Unda 20, and Unda 243. That's the basic kind of drainage detox combo you'll see from Unda. Uh, Unda is also a very fantastic company. It's been around for a very long time. They typically refer to their process as biotherapeutic drainage instead of, instead of just drainage. If you ever hear the term biotherapeutic drainage, we're referring to Unda remedies um, in particular. And so they're also grown in the remedies, uh, the ingredients for the remedies are grown in a biodynamic, very organic uh, fashion, which is great. Uh, there, it's a little bit complex. There's a lot of remedies in the Unda line. I find it a little bit clunky and a little bit hard to use. It's not as straightforward as some of the other companies. Um, but people who use them, love them and have really great success with them. I tend to use them more for infants and young children, uh, and had, have had success there, but, um, it is a really fantastic line. Uh, and, uh, a lot of practitioners that you can refer to in the United States, a lot of courses, uh, Dr. Um, Dick Tom is a really, um, one of the found founding, uh, fathers of using UNDA in the United States. You can learn more about him and, um, on the, on their website, the, um, biotherapeutic uh, drainage and bioregulatory medicine uh, is what to refer to as this type of medicine um, uh, that Dr. Tom is one of the founding fathers for. Well, again, rules of taking them, you're doing one to 30 drops, you're doing two, three times a day, minimum of four weeks. Again, if you're dealing with chronic disease, you may need to do them longer. And then you could take them, put them directly into your mouth, drop them that way, a little bit of water, um, they're taken separately. They're not taken together. So you'll do the liver, kidney, lymphatic, and gut remedy all separately, one after another, and typically away from food. Um, and that's usually the way, the best way that they're they're taking it. 
As I mentioned, the importance of minerals, oligo minerals, uh, I like to use, uh, you can use from uh, Unda, Genestra makes an oligo mineral. Uh, oligo minerals referring to uh, low dose minerals in solution, in a, mineral, in, a, in a liquid solution. They tend to be a little bit better absorbed. They tend to be a little bit more, um, they're um, similar concentrations that you find in cells. So there's a better flow in and out of cells of the minerals. I like to use uh, oligo minerals um, during a drainage and actually throughout the year is a very important way of detoxifying, uh, of, of getting minerals in when you're going through detox. You also want to focus on, you could focus on mineral waters like Pellegrino, Gerolsteiner. These are going to be high in minerals and a great way to supplement those into your diet. You can always consult with your healthcare provider first before starting any meds or any new meds or supplements. Uh, generally, okay to be on drainage and other supplements as well. Uh, if you're on a whole supplement protocol, you can. Um, it's it's safe to be on drainage as well. Uh, over time, you may notice that as you go through drainage and you go through protocols, you may need le meds and so other supplements less and less as you start feeling stronger, healthier, more vital. You'll need fewer uh, fewer inputs into the system um, when you're dealing with um, when you're dealing with um, when you work start working with drainage remedies uh, over time. Uh, can you go on different detox protocols when you're starting drainage? It's generally uh, advised that when you're doing a, a drainage protocol to focus on drainage uh, and not to, to do other detoxification at the same time, do the drainage first, and then you can work on other detoxification protocols. You're going to have a healthier, stronger, uh, better able to tolerate other forms of detox when you work on drainage first. Um, and then as a general, always go slow and easy. Um, when you're going through a detox or a drainage as well. But when you're going through a detox, uh, if you decide to do it at the same time and do, do uh, other detox protocols while you're doing a drainage protocol, um, just be, be careful in terms of overstimulating the body, overstimulating uh, detoxification. So we want to um, always, in anything, any kind of, in, in any uh, med uh, medical procedure, any medical modality, it's always better to go slow and easy than, than kind of, uh, go really high and fast uh, with the body. Again, these are temporary signs of inflammation. It's, again, it's a good sign. Because we're mobilizing toxicity. We're mobilizing uh, toxins out of the body. Um, moving out of generation more into the acute inflammation is, is a good sign. So again, some, some things to look out for. Again, we've talked a little bit about this already, but just again, so, you know, fatigue, aches and pain, loose stools, fever, rash, exacerbation of symptoms, reoccurring of older symptoms. Uh, can happen when you're going through a drainage um, protocol. And again, we can adjust the dose down so we're not having so much of these, um, these types of symptoms. So that's basically it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that lecture. Um, kind of a really fast um, intro into drainage remedies, European biological medicine. Some further resources if you're wanting to um, learn more. Uh, I have a course on drainage called Intro to Drainage. Enrollment's now open. I'm working on an advanced course for drainage that'll include uh, information on how to use drainage in, in intravenous form, and then also using drainage in neural therapy remedies, drainage remedies in neural therapy. So I'm working on that course. Um, resources if you want to learn <clears throat> more about Saluna, saluna.com, Guna uh, on amazon.com as you can purchase those, also on full script. Saluna you would purchase through Paulsmart Europe, which is a German pharmacy in Europe. You can get Saluna remedies. Unda, you can get through so Royal website also available on full script. If you want to learn more about uh, in these remedies and more about biological medicine, uh, use some websites I, I highly recommend: soroyal.com, biomedicine.com, innovativemedicine.com, biologicalmedicineinstitute.com, european-wellness.eu. All fantastic, fantastic resources for biological medicine. And again, things I'm working on as well is an advanced course. I'm also working on a detox and drainage academy, which is coming out very shortly in April. Um, and that's going to be really fun and exciting where I'm going to be lecturing on different topics of, on drainage, but also detoxification each month, a new topic. And then also guiding you through different protocols as I go through the protocol myself. And so we'll go through it together. There's going to be an online community where we're going to be able to share uh, videos and share, uh, meet with the, the community and share with different members of the community. So I'm excited about that. Uh, so keep your eyes open for that when that comes out. And then if you're a practitioner, you want to get uh, a really good foundation into the remedies, how to use them, protocols, I uh, have the practitioner reference guide. It's a free resource. I have on my website. also have a link 
uh, in the description below. So you can download that and get started with drain engineering practice right away. So thank you very much for uh, listening and following along. I hope you really enjoyed this lecture. Some information on me, my website, drmarketingscott.com. Uh, support at drmarketingscott.com if you have any uh, questions. My Instagram where I'm very active and my YouTube channel. And just some resources if you're wanting to kind of look at that. You can take a look at some of these resources where I got uh, this information from. So again, thank you so much for listening to this uh, lecture. Hope you find it useful and I will see you on the next video.